All right. Complimentary metal oxide semiconductor layout. We're gonna, learn about, <laughs> we're gonna learn about how pretty much everything that's electronics that you know works. Big topic, I know. All right, so we're gonna start from the end of the word. Semiconductor. All right, so it's a semiconductor. Okay, so it's in between an insulator and a conductor. Um, and what's nice about it, basically, is that we can control the conductance uh, by doing something called doping. So if we, we have a, a lattice of atoms, we can uh, put in different elements as we, as we choose, and we can basically put in charges where we want. Um, and what's really amazing about resistivity and conductance is that it spans 30 orders of magnitude. There's nothing else in nature that spans that many orders of magnitude. The, the quality of the material. Um, and silicon is the best semiconductor. And we're, of course, in Silicon Valley, so we should all know a little bit something about <laughs> silicon. Um, after oxygen, it's the most abundant in the Earth's crust, which is awesome because it also has a lot of really useful properties um, you know, for solar electronics, many different things. Um, and it's got 14 of everything, sort of. Because, of course, we mess around with the number of neutrons and the number of electrons. Um, and here's a picture of an, uh, a giant ingot of, of silicon. So basically, they start with a single crystal, and they dip it into a giant vat of liquid silicon, and they pull it out slowly, so it's all the same orientation. And then what you do is you take this ingot and you slice it to make these disks, and that's probably what you, they, they make processors out of those disks. All right, so the oxide. This is, the, this is an insulator. Um, and the best one we found so far is silicon dioxide, which is awesome because we're already using silicon. Um, and it also forms naturally, so if you, have, if you have some silicon and you expose it to the atmosphere, um, it's going to form a nice, really thin layer of silicon dioxide. And you guys all know what silicon dioxide is because it's quartz. <laughs> um, and they're actually they're messing around with tons of elements in the periodic table now. So they're really pushing the limits of the current CMOS designs. Um, so hafnium oxide is uh, actually gaining prominence, um, but silicon dioxide is the basic one. All right, so the metal, you guys all know what the metal is. It's conductive, and it's going to be the gate of the MOSFET, which is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And we're going to get into that in a second. Um, what they actually use mostly is polysilicon. More silicon, which is great. So it's not actually a metal. Um, but polysilicon replaced, it used to be metal in the, in, you know, the old days, like 30 years ago. <laughs> and uh, they replaced it with polysilicon, which is not as conductive, but it's made of silicon, which makes it really easy to put on the silicon breakers. Alright, so now we're going to put this all together. The MOS part, metal oxide semiconductor. Metal gate, here's the, the dielectric, is also the, called the oxide. Um, and here's our silicon semiconductor down here. Um, so basically, we're going to manipulate the semiconductor lattice by putting in different elements, and we can control what charges are located in the semiconductor gate. All right. So let's pretend that we put a ton of negative charges in there. Okay. So we have lots of negative charge down here. If we put on the metal, let's say a negative charge, okay, it's going to scare away all the electrons, right? Right. Opposites attract. Okay. So we're going to be left with positive charges along the top because we have a negative charge in the metal. It's going to push away the electrons, so we're just going to have positives left there. Okay? That's, that's basically how a, a MOSFET works. So here's another demonstration of this. Um, and there's two kinds of MOSFETs. There's NMOS and PMOS. And I guess for negative, keep it positive, but it's kind of a weird way of thinking about it. But, um, so basically what's going to happen is here, we're going to put no voltage on the gate. All right? So this is our metal. If we have no voltage on the gate, the semiconductor just sits there. And these two, uh, the input and the output, are not connected, all right? So this is basically a switch, all right? And then there's zero volts, they're not connected. If we put one volt on the gate, all right? So we're putting some positive charge on the gate. It's going to scare away, in this case, all the positive charges from this area of the semiconductor. And we're going to be left with negative charges there. And you see how now we have a connection of negative charges from the source to the drain, from the input to the output. So now these two are connected. So in our switch, if we have zero volts applied, it's off. And if we have one volt applied, it's on. And that's an NMOS, all right? So it's a switch, it's on in one case, off in another case, <coughs> NMOS. And there's the schematic symbol for it. All right, this is PMOS. It's completely opposite, but otherwise it's completely the same. 
If we have one volt applied, then it's not connected. If we have zero volts applied, then it is connected, right? So NMOS, all right, connected when you apply one volt, otherwise not connected. PMOS, connected when you apply one volt, otherwise not connected. All right, and there's a schematic symbol for it. It's got a little bubble in front of the gate there, okay? All right, onward. Complementary is the C and CMOS. Basically, this just means that we're going to use both NMOS and PMOS. And uh, this is actually a big deal because um, it changes how all of our processors are laid out. It changes the way that we try and reduce power, how we uh, deal with efficiency. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take NMOS and PMOS transistors. We're going to combine them and we're going to make things that are called logic gates. All right, so a gate is a series of switches. Now, there's a few important characteristics of logic gates. Um, basically, we don't want the output affecting the input. All right, so that's one important thing. Um, and luckily, transistors allow us to do that pretty easily. Um, that also allows us to chain them together. Okay, because if we have a bunch of um, outputs that don't affect the inputs, we can just have this, you know, propagation in one direction through our layout. So they're unidirectional. And we're also only going to allow them to have uh, constants as outputs. We'll, we'll, we'll get into this. We'll have some examples. It'll make a lot more sense. All right, so the basic inverter. This is the most basic case of a logic gate. All right, so here we have a PMOS. You might recognize the schematic symbol there. Here we have an NMOS, all right? This is ground, so that's zero. This is VDD, that's one. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So we have one and zero, binary computers, right? All right, we're getting there. Um, and here's an input and an output. And this is the schematic symbol for an inverter. All right, so let's, let's actually look at how this inverter works. So let's say we, we take a signal, which just happens to be high. All right, so we're inputting a one, all right? Um, does anybody know what's gonna happen here? It's called an inverter, so does anybody have any guesses? I'm putting a zero. It's gonna come out as a zero, all right. Let's see how that happens. All right, so this is a PMOS, right? Remember with PMOS, if we apply a one, it's off. If you apply a one to an NMOS, it's on, okay? So the bottom, the bottom transistor is connected, right? So we're connecting the output to ground. This one's off, so it's not connected. So it's not connected to the one, right? And of course, as predicted, we get a zero at the output, all right? Now this is the opposite case, if we input a zero, top one's on, bottom one's off, so it's connected to our VDD, which is one volt, or a logic one, and we, we get a one output, all right? 